Financial Accounting 11 Depreciation Methods. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page and our LinkedIn group. I'd like to talk about three basic methods of depreciation, and I have a lot of students who have trouble with double declining balance. So before I get to that, let me talk first about straight line depreciation, which is the most common. So let's assume we have an asset that has a certain cost, and we also have a salvage value, that is, an amount of money that we can get by selling the asset when we're done using it. The cost is 50000 and the salvage value is ten. So the actual amount I need to depreciate, cost minus salvage value, is $40,000. I have a useful life, the amount of time I'll use the asset, of ten years. So if I take $40,000 that I need to depreciate of cost, and I divide it by 10 years, I get annual depreciation of $4,000. And what's important for straight line is that annual depreciation is the same each year. If I took the depreciation as a percentage of the cost minus salvage value, it would be 4000 divided by 40000 or 10% a year. And that 10% is expensed evenly over the life of the asset. The whole point of depreciation is to match the expense of the asset with the revenue produced with the asset. So what we just did was explain straight line depreciation. We're going to use that as a jumping off point to talk about double declining balance. One important check figure with double declining balance is stop, you stop depreciating once you get to the salvage value. So if, in this example, you're able to sell an asset at the end for $30,000, once your book value is depreciated all the way down to $30,000, you would sell the asset and get cash at the salvage value, you would stop depreciating the asset. So that's important to know. There are three steps for double declining balance. So step one is compute the straight line rate as a percentage. So for example, if you were depreciating over four years, you would be doing 25% a year depreciation because 25% times four is 100%. The second step is to multiply the straight line rate by 2. You double the percentage found in step 1. That's why we call it double declining balance. So 25% in step 1 becomes 50%. 50% is the rate that we use for depreciation. That's what we see in column B here. Step 3 is to compute annual depreciation, which is in this column, and a new book value which is in this column. So the way the chart works is, here's the year, here's the book value, here's the rate of depreciation as a percentage, which we can see changes in year four. It's 50% in years one to three, which is the rate we figured in step two here. Our annual depreciation, and we see that that annual depreciation is uneven. Unlike straight line, it's not even. And the accumulated depreciation, I define here, it's the sum of all depreciation recognized over the life of the asset. So we keep adding it up. So year two represents year one and two. Year three represents years one, two, and three. So let's start. We start off with a B value, a book value, of $270,000. So I place that here in year one. That's A. And I multiply A times B, which is the 50% rate, 270 times 50% gives me an annual depreciation of $135,000. So my accumulated depreciation after one year is $135,000. I subtract book value from accumulated depreciation and I get a new book value in year two of $135,000 original book value minus accumulated depreciation. I multiply that new book value times 50% and I get a new annual depreciation for year two of 67,500. 
my accumulated depreciation increases its two years worth. It's the 135 plus the 6750. Year three, I take my year two book value and I subtract that year's depreciation. Or, another way of saying it is I take the original book value less the accumulated depreciation. Either way, I get to 6750. So I could do 135 less the 6750 one year at a time, or I could take the original book value less the accumulated depreciation. Either way, I get to the 67500. I multiply that by 50 percent, I get 33500. My accumulated depreciation is now three years worth, years one, two, and three added up, 236250. Year four, 6750 minus 33,500 gives me a new book value of 33,750. But remember, I don't depreciate below the salvage value. So my year four annual depreciation is simply 33,750 less 30,000 or 3750. And then I'm done, I'm finished depreciating. So I put a note here the book value. 270. Less all the accumulated depreciation of 240. Never goes below the salvage value, which is 30,000. Why? Because you'd always sell the asset and get cash at the salvage value. We would sell it at 30,000. We wouldn't keep depreciating it. So you can see with double declining balance that our annual depreciation declines sharply each year. The last one I'll cover is activity-based depreciation, which is depreciating an asset not based on time, but pay based on use. And in this case, let's assume we have a machine that's going to produce a certain number of units while we own it and we can use the machine. So the same statistics I had in straight-line depreciation. Cost of 50 less $10,000 salvage value gives me a cost I need to depreciate of $40,000. The units I expect to produce are 100,000 units. So my depreciation is figured per unit, not per year, per unit. $40,000 divided by 100,000 units is 40 cents per unit of depreciation. So the annual depreciation will vary depending on the year's production. So for example, if I have a year where I produce 16,000, if I produce 40,000 units, excuse me, in red, if I take 40,000 times 40 cents, I get an annual depreciation of $16,000. And one check figure is once we've produced 100,000 units, we've used up the entire asset. It will be fully depreciated. That's as far as we're going to get on financial 11 depreciation methods are not on the web. There's a section of the website with additional videos and spreadsheets not on YouTube. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL. You can email me for a complete list of our videos on YouTube. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions, stltest.net is the website. Here's my email address and my phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.